my name is Pastor Richard Clark, and I'd like to welcome you to Solomon Ministry. Uh, Solomon Ministry is uh, a, a television talk show that promotes church services, artists, book writers, songwriters, praise teams, uh, Christian councils, and we uh, oftentimes have discussion groups. Uh, and by the way, if you have a testimony that you would like to let us know, you can let us know. Uh, at this time, I'd like to welcome our panel, which we're going to be discussing, is the power of the supernatural power of God more pre uh, relevant in the African continents than in North America? And I'd like to welcome my two guests at this time, uh, Bishop Henry Achu, as I, if I pronounced it right, and yeah, um, Elder Samuel Gain. Am Janine. I correct? Janine. 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 Welcome. You're welcome. So tell us, I'd like to first of all, uh, before we get into our uh, topic, I'd like to, for you, both of you to just give us a brief testimony or about your background, uh, something about yourself that you would want the viewers to know. Uh, like you heard before, my name's uh, Henry Achu, and uh, I'm from Cameroon. Cameroon is somewhere located between west or central of Africa. And uh, I'm a Christian, a servant of God, and I believe in the supernatural power of God. And that's what I teach, that's what I preach, and that's what I impart into people. Thank you. Yes, and I'd like to comment on that, that uh, I've seen you in ministry, and, I, and it's very clear and evident to those that are there that you do operate in the supernatural. Elder Samuel, if you mind, I call in you that. Yes. Uh, a, tell us a little about yourself. You would want the guests to know. Oh, okay, I'm originally from Ghana, Africa, where I uh, fellowship at uh, Overcomers Bible Church International, which uh, my bishop is Bishop Akon Harrison. That's where I went under the I went under his feet to learn more about God, and he has imparted a great knowledge in me, which in turn I also intend to impart into people. So, before we answer the question, in your opinion or in your, in, your, in your teaching, what would you consider the power of God to be? Uh, what I'll begin by saying is there is natural power which is being given to man to function with. And uh, I did a teaching on four levels of power which uh, uh, in, in English I would briefly explain, which has to do with uh, two levels at the level where a natural human being operates in, which is the first is physical energy, secondly is human authority, and then we go to the third, which has to do with divinely delegated authority, God's authority functioning in man, and then finally we have divine energy, which is at work in man. So, talking about supernatural power, it's actually talking about the two other levels of power, which has to do with uh, uh, divine authority. When a human being is operating as if God himself would have operated concerning a situation, like a man will speak and it happens. And then divine energy, on the other hand, is when uh, a, a human being, God will use a human being, he lays his hand on another human being, and the power of God hits that person. If the person was sick, the person get he gets healed and things like that. So in brief, it's power that is beyond human comprehension. You elder uh, Samuel? Yes. Uh, the power of God, to me, it's infinite. It does everything. It goes everywhere. It doesn't know where you're from and where you're going. It does what you want it to do. <coughs> Good answer. <laughs> uh, so the question is then, is the power of God more prevalent in the African continent more than North America? That seems to be a question. And I've, I've over the years, noticed uh, ministers coming from Africa, they seem to have a, a different mindset in terms of uh, the supernatural power of God. And, and it's very evident in their ministry. So. Is it more prevalent in Africa, where they come from, than in North America? 
Well, so many people say, and uh, I would not want to say it's more prevalent there, but what I would want to say is that in Africa, we actually believe God is supposed to be in action more than being heard of. And so equally, I believe in the West, North America specifically, uh, it's true that I've been to several places and many people are in church, they, they worship God, they praise God, yet they don't believe that the power of God is real because they've never experienced it. So in conclusion, I would say we experience it in Africa much more than most people in North America experience it. So you, would you say it's more frequent? Uh, it becomes a lifestyle to us in Africa. Not just frequent, it's not uh, a visitation anymore. We believe God lives in us. And so it's not frequent, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle, okay. What do you think, Elder? Uh, I think it's right. Uh, the, the reason why I hear that most of the times is because um, Africans take to God differently than in the West. We, if you look at the economy of Africa and comparing the economy of North America, it's two totally different things. In so being, the Africans have to rely on God more for their provision. But in here in the West, we rely more on ourselves for our provisions. Okay. So it makes the work of God more evidence, uh, evidential more in Africa than in North America. So someone would, or one of our, our viewership would say, mm -hmm. why? Why? Why is, there, why is there such a disconnect? Is there something that we can do in order for us to be able to experience what you're experiencing in, in the African continent? Yeah, very important. It's a very important point. I think everything has a beginning. And uh, such a program is very important for us to touch uh, ideas like that. There are many things to be done. Uh, there is something we call unbelieving believers. Like uh, Elder Sam said, the system has made it in such a way that the people get so contented with the little they have and they think they don't need God. The first thing you must be able to do is to recognize that you are a creature and there is the creator. And with that mindset, it submits you under the creator. Because the moment you think that, oh, I do not have a creator, it becomes a problem. Secondly, after recognizing that you have a creator who is in the person of God, then you have to find out what has been made possible for you to actually serve your creator, actually serve God, which is what I'm going to talk about a bit. Uh, in order for you to be able to serve God faithfully, you have to recognize that God has made a way, which is what makes Christianity different from religion. Because religion is man's way to get to God. Now, many people have realized there is God, there is the Creator, but it's difficult. They are looking for the way to get to Him. So that's given birth to religion. But Christianity simply means God has made a way to reach out to man. And the only way that God has made to reach out to man is Jesus the Christ. And so with this understanding now, as a child of God or as a Christian, you know God has reached out to you, which means you know God, it is the will of God for you to have him consistently on your side, to experience him on a daily basis. But I've come across a lot of Christians, especially at this side of the world, they think they still have to do a lot in order to attract God to them. It's not about what you have done. The scripture says, uh, uh, we, as we have to understand, it's not by works, it's by faith. 
Yes. Righteousness is not by works, it's by faith. <laughs> he became sin that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ. So Jesus Christ had taken our place and given us an opportunity to have fellowship with the Father. And as a result of that, we can experience him, we can know him more. With this mindset, you can come before God and be open enough to receive what he has for you, in store for you. I think that's the broken link yes. that we have here. Elder, what would, you th what would you say Africans are doing right that we can learn from? Um, <clears throat> what Africans are doing right is basically they expect from God. They know him to be the creator. He created them, so they expect from him. Mm -hmm. If, for instance, me and you sitting here, if you are my dad, and I know you to be who I think you are, there's nothing, and I need something, who, should, who else should I go to? We have got to understand that God is the Yahweh, the only one. So if we don't believe in him, where else are we going to go? Because look at the African continent, the way it is. So if you follow God as your creator, that yeah. in his word is telling that he will provide for you. He will make way for you where there seems to be no way. Why, where else would you want to go uh, worry yourself with other things that will not bring you nothing? And the way we worship God, Compared to the West here, it's different. We give him reverence. When you go to Ghana, for instance, and you see somebody can, you see, as they say, and uh, uh, David worshiped and danced that he became naked. Go to Africa and you see people really worshiping God. If you come here in North America, you see worship and praise. Somebody will be folding hands and looking, just watching. <laughs> or somebody will be sitting. But you never see that in Africa. Because it's time for us to worship the king. It's us, time for us to show, like showcase him, make him the king of our lives. So the question has to be asked, is the West, mm -hmm. is North America ready for this kind of a manifestation? Uh, I, I like to add to what Erda is saying. Mm. I think uh, it has our, our, our values in Africa play a lot. They have a lot of role to, to the way Africans worship God. For example, you are brought up naturally, culturally, to understand that if somebody is older than you, maybe just for a day, the person deserves respect from you. from you. And so growing up, you already know that when somebody is elderly or bigger than you, the person deserves respect, not just normally if the person is from your family. So there is already a foundation in you to be able to give respect to people who are higher than you. And so it's a tradition, it's a cultural thing. Yes. We, we have it mm -hmm. in us. So when we come into the presence of God, now if we give respect to man and we give respect to maybe friends who are elder than us mm -hmm. and then we give respect to the leaders in the community and then when we come to God who is the almighty, all-powerful, you see, in worship in Africa you find when I, I'm in church worshiping God, there are times I just lie on the floor, I'm rolling on the floor. Because if I cannot do this to the Almighty, there is no other person I could do it for. No other person deserves it. Yes. So these are some of the things I believe because it comes from the heart.